A chat. How do I type in this shit? I don't think I can. Yo, what's up, guys? I'm gonna be right back. Just give me a second here. What's going on, everyone? What is it going out? What's going out? What's going out? Jack, what's up, brother? How you doing? How you guys doing? How you guys doing? Justin, how are things going, man? So with most of my lives, I'm just curious, where are you guys all from? Where are you guys watching from? Ruben, how you doing? Where are you guys from? Where are you guys watching from? You watching from the States? You watching from a different country? How long have you been live? I've been live for like two minutes, man. I just turned it on. Texas. All right. I'm in uh, I'm in Chicago. Well, a suburb of Chicago. West suburb of Chicago. But Illinois. Ruben, what's the weather like in Texas right now? Jack, you're from the UK. Let's go. Where at in the UK specifically, Jack? chilly bro but not like up there well actually today today is gonna be like 50 in chicago which is like i mean i don't i don't know what it's like in uh in texas man but if for us that's like the warmest that it's been in a long fucking time so dude right we're right now we're getting this this weird like midwestern this this fucking shit happens every year but it'll be like 13 degrees one day and then the next day it'll be like 45 i don't know if you guys can tell my fucking allergies are kicking my ass it's because it's fucking 51 degrees today and yesterday it was like 12 so it's rough 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 thoughts on the arnold split i think it's fine i think it's great Um, why do I feel a nerve or something pumping in my head and it hurts when lifting suddenly? I don't know, dude. You got to see a doctor for that. I can't answer that question for you. I am not a, uh, I am not a medical professional by any means. You think medical professionals wear pink sweatshirts, dude? No, I'm just, I'm just playing. But for real, I'm, I'm not a medical professional, so... You're gonna have to see somebody if if that keeps uh if that keeps happening, man. You're gonna have to see something, see someone. Can I download this? The 
<laughs> Thoughts on Babe Ruth testing positive for PEDs? <sighs> you hate to see it, bro. You hate to see it. Obviously, I, I know you're just fucking with me, but I think I think PEDs like started getting inve not invented, but like pushed out in like the 50s or 60s. Um, at least I'm a member of John Jewett's uh, program or whatever, and that's that's what he said. So it would be unlikely. Huge Babe Ruth fan, though, dude. I, I was the biggest Babe Ruth fan growing up. I have a Babe Ruth jersey. I'm a Yankees fan, uh, and I uh, I was a huge Babe Ruth fan, man. I have a Babe Ruth jersey at my parents' house. Solid point. I have elbow pain every time I extend it. Should I take a deload? No, I think you should find the exercises that you're doing that are bothering and aggravating the elbow and stop doing them. Um, I mean, if, if you're having elbow pain and it's all you're also like not able to progress any of your lifts, then like sure. But uh, if um, if you're having no problem with progressing your lifts, then I would just figure out what's causing the problem and fix that. So um, yeah, I'm gonna go see a doctor. Fair point. Yeah, I f I feel you, bro. I feel you. Listen to Propane Money by Hank Trolls. Maybe later. I'm eating like 5K, but only feel full off of low-calorie, dense foods. Uh, you must have a crazy appetite. Um, if, if you're actually eating 5,000 calories and still are hungry, then uh, you must have a crazy appetite. But that's... You got to do what you got to do. Um, hunger hunger is like... Obviously, it's like a, it's like a physical... Physical feeling, you know, you feel it in your stomach, but usually just dealing with hunger is like entirely mental. So, drink more water. Um, yeah, but if you're eating five thousand calories and you're still eating those low calorie dense foods, though, man, you must be you must just be pounding it. That would suck. That would suck. <laughs> Make you smile. Yeah. What's it called? Propane money? Hang. I'm going to write it down here. I'm going to put it in my... Uh, put it in the queue to play. Uh, also, guys, I'm, I'm saying this because I just got a notification, but I just, I just put a new post up on my Instagram. Uh, you guys should go check that out. That's a pretty pretty good post. It basically just explains why I like to uh, why I like to train with lower training volumes, uh, and I give some really good reasoning as to why. It's like ten pictures that you swipe back and forth to. So go check that out if if you follow me on Instagram. You have any opinions on transitioning from beginner LP to something more hypertrophy focused? Um. Man, I'd probably just start with like upper lower. I'd probably just start with a more upper lower um, type of training split. Keep your lifts simple. Uh, an upper an upper workout would look like a chest press, a tricep press, maybe a shoulder press, and then a lat movement and upper back movement. And then I would probably do a bicep curl and a lateral raise, and that's it. And then your lower day. Um, I would do calves, adductors, ham curls, leg extensions, and then some sort of squat pattern. And then maybe some abs or something on there. Squat pattern can be a Smith squat, barbell squat, leg press, hack squat, whatever. Something that puts the knee into full flexion. Love you. I love you too, Jaws. Love that you knew it was a joke. Some people on this app don't think it's a joke and they freak out. Yeah, I mean, those, those I think are people who just like don't understand. You know what I mean? Like they have like no sports history. Like if you say Babe Ruth, to, you know, Babe Ruth is playing in like the 20s and 30s. Like if, if people, whatever, you, you know where I'm going with this rant, but yeah. I feel you on that though, dude. Some, I mean, people on TikTok, Instagram, wherever, like some people can't take take jokes. It's rough. It's rough. 
Seth Rogen chill. I can't chill. Clearly. Yeah, Charlotte, man. What what does uh what's your what's your body weight doing on that level of calories, Charlotte? What's it doing? You look like young lean. I'm kind of scared to Google who this is. Every every time someone comes on here and says that I look like somebody and I, I look them up, I feel like I'm just like this ugly ass motherfucker. Yeah, dude, this this dude young lean is like I mean, no offense, but he's not like a good looking dude, so I don't know I don't know how I feel about saying that I look like him. And this dude, this dude don't even have facial hair. Like, I don't know, whatever, whatever. Seth Rogen, I get a lot. This young lean is a first one. Uh, who else do I get a lot? I've gotten James Corden before, <clears throat> whatever. If I'm still sore in the body part I'm about to hit after a deload, should I still hit it? Um, well, if, if you've taken a week of deloading and you have a body part that's still sore, then I probably wouldn't. Um, but I would I would be questioning why it's still sore after a week. That you're either like really, really overtrained or really, really under recovering. So I don't know. Try to explain that to me a little bit more if you can. Left. I don't know what you mean by that. Uh, what are the signs of not recovering? Your sleep, your sleep is bad. Your digestion is bad. Um, you're not progressing your lifts in the gym. Um, libido is down. You're in a bad mood all the time. Would you recommend using wrist straps on pull days? Yes, I would. I will never, never not use straps again. People who say, oh, you shouldn't use straps to build your forearms are fucking stupid. You can do direct stuff for your forearms if you want, but the reality is is that you're not gonna be you're not gonna be hitting failure with your actual back muscles if your grip is giving out. So I've been I've been using straps since day one and haven't given a fuck about it ever since. Are you African American? Clearly. Clearly. Hey man, I seem to recover well on all exercises, however. RDLs take me four days. Any ideas why? Yeah, because uh, a deadlift pattern is a multi-joint exercise. Squats and deadlifts are going to be the two most taxing exercises that you can possibly do because they use damn near every muscle group in your body. That's, that's why hip hinges have to be programmed like appropriately because they cause a ton of fatigue. So that's that's pretty normal, especially if you're training hard like... I feel fucked up from a hard set of deadlifts like for days, for days. So, normal. Five, seven and a half, I haven't weighed in forever. Huh. Well, that's, that's still crazy that you're eating 5,000. You must have like a super like busy lifestyle. You must move a lot or something. You're very handsome, bro. Don't worry. I appreciate you. It, it doesn't like, it doesn't like bother me when people like, when people say that I look like people, but it's, it's usually like people that I've never even heard of. So I Google them. And then when I Google them, I'm like, who the fuck is this guy? I am lean, but I strength train six days a week, but walk like 20 K. Yeah. 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 That's definitely it. That's believable. Then I believe you. Definitely believe you then. Bless me, I'm getting ready for a 20 rep Cybex hack. Holy fuck, dude. People that have never used the Cybex hack before don't know how fucking hard that Cybex hack is. I've, I've never even used a Cybex hack. But everyone that has used the Cybex hack is, talks about how fucking hard it is. So I can imagine that this 20 rep shit is going to be crazy. You should film it. Film it and tag me in it. That'd be cool. Don't let the bugs crawl around anymore. Just scratch them out. They're itching anyways. I don't know what you mean by that. What supplements do you usually take? Um, tons. I take a lot. Um, oh, God, dude. I, I don't even think I can list them all off the top of my head. I seriously can't. Especially when I'm on cycle and I'm taking a lot more health supplements. Uh, I mean, I there's no way that I could list them off. I mean, fish oil, curcumin... Magnesium, baby aspirin, ubiquinol, pycnogenol, 
vitamin K2, vitamin D3, blood pressure supplements, lipid supplements. I mean, it's just way too much stuff to list. And that's, that's just health supplements. That's not protein, creatine, caffeine, aminos, carbs. I take a lot. Bro, I can't lift. Why? Why can't you lift? I have two lower days. One day I hack squat and the other I barbell squat. That's, that's great. Go for it. Oh, are, are you the guy that asked about the upper lower earlier? I just want to make sure. Um, I don't remember if you're the guy that said that you uh, were transitioning to upper lower, but um, yeah, if you got two lower days and one day you hack squat and the other day you barbell squat, that's perfectly fine. That's exactly how I would do it. I would use two different squatting exercises on uh, on um, on your two lower days. So that's great. I hit the body part with the normal high intensity after deload. After a deload, and tomorrow I'm gonna hit B. Okay, so so your 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 deload is over, and you you came back the first session at full volume. And then you're gonna do the B rotation of that next. Am I am I understanding that right? My health conditions don't let me lift. Um, well, obviously I don't know the situation that you're dealing with, but uh, if you're just sick, I mean that's very temporary. Uh, if you have like a very serious health condition that won't let you lift for like an extended period of time, then that's unfortunate and. And I'm sorry for you, but if you're just like, if you're sick or something, you know, you're just a couple of days away from, a couple of days away from getting better, I, I would assume, you know, hopefully. Obviously, I don't, I don't know the situation, so I don't want to talk on it, but. Hey, I received the COVID vaccine on Saturday and Sunday. I was feeling really beaten up and I wasn't able to go to the gym that day. Should I compensate for it this week or just forget it? Just forget it. It's not that big of a deal. Online prep coach, a.k.a. unemployed on TikTok, LMAO. <laughs> Who the fuck are you, dude? Yeah, uh, anonymous profile picture and no videos. It's always people like this. I actually do have a job. I, uh, I manage a GNC. I'm actually about to go to work in, in two hours. Uh, and I also have a coaching business that's actually doing really well. Actually, look at this. I'm actually working on, on client work this morning as I'm sitting here. So cookie crisp, I don't know who the fuck you think you are, but uh, get out, get out, get out, get out. If I only have a seated leg curl at my gym, how should I structure my hamstring work? I would do the seated hamstring curl on both sessions, but I would alter your rep ranges. So maybe one day you do work in like the eight to 12 range and then the next time you do work in the 15 to 20 range. Um, obviously you're gonna be doing the same exercise but high rep and low rep is a good way to kind of undulate your, your periodization there. So like, like my gym, I have the adductor. Um, one rotation I do like really high rep work like 15 to 20 and then the next one I do like you know, 10 to 15, like stuff more moderate, or you could do like pause reps. So one day you do like where you pause at the contraction and the next day you just do normal. Um, there are a couple ways that you could do it, uh, but I, I would probably do the high rep or low and low rep periodization. Thoughts on ashwagandha. I like it. Um, I haven't been taking it recently and I'm thinking about like getting back onto it because um, I've been feeling a little stressed uh, and overwhelmed lately. Uh, speaking of this asshole Cookie Crisp that said something in the uh, in the comments, my, my coaching business is is really taking off, which is fucking great. Like I'm not complaining about that, but I'm still also working a full time job at a supplement store. So managing a growing uh, client list and a full time job is like getting really stressful, and I'm feeling pretty stressed and overwhelmed lately. So I'm I'm thinking about going and and taking it again. Um, I, I don't know if it's something that's like, holy shit, it's going to change your life, but I, it, it could just be a coincidence, but ever since I stopped taking my ashwagandha, I felt my stress high levels have been a little higher. So it could be all in my head. It could be whatever, normal, 
Nice beard. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you. Uh, in COVID isolation currently, gonna miss five days in the gym minimum, really tragic. Um, I know it feels tragic, but honestly, man, it isn't really, uh, isn't really, uh, like five days isn't that long. It's really not. And even, even if it goes into like a week or a week and a half, it's really not, not that long. It really is. I, I know like when you're in the moment, you're like, holy shit, this feels like forever, but it isn't, it isn't really that big of a deal. Um, Usually when I'm sick and I have to take time out of the gym like that, the only thing that I really make sure that I focus on is keeping hydrated and making sure that I don't lose weight. Uh, because usually when I get sick, it's hard for me to eat. Um, so I try to drink like juice or I'll eat like McDonald's or some bullshit. Just easy ways to get calories in so that my weight, so I, that I don't lose a lot of weight. And usually like within a day or two of going back into the gym, I'm just as strong and feel just as good as as I was before I left. And, and sometimes if I'm really, really tired, you know, and I have to take a week out or something because of sickness or something, I feel better coming back from that. So it, it, I know it feels like it's like really stressful, but it isn't realistically that big of a deal. So just keep that in mind. Just keep the big picture in mind. Look at my profile picture. I can't, I can't pull up people's profiles while I'm doing a live so and if based off of your profile picture I don't know if that's like actually you or if that's just a troll picture but fine god yo Con Kanye is going off the fucking rocker bro holy shit dude this dude that dude needs to get canceled for real it sucks, dude. I used to be a huge Kanye fan, and then I, I haven't really liked much of his his like music alone recently. Like none of his past two albums, I was really like, "Damn, this is good stuff." Uh, and then also the fact that he's clearly a fucking lunatic is uh, really kind of turned me off from Kanye. But Kanye needs to find God. <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, moms, I love hot moms. Um, yeah, I would, I would train it again, probably D depending on the level of soreness, man. If you're still like super fucking sore, I probably wouldn't train it again. But if you're, uh, if you're just a little sore, then it's fine. U usually I go into most of my leg days with my legs still just a little bit sore from the last one. Uh, it's, it's really going to come down to, can you progress your lifts? If you can go into the gym while you're sore and like, you can still progress your lifts, then it's fine. Um, if you go into the gym and you're so sore that it's taking away, then I would consider reducing the amount of volume that you're doing in your A leg session so that you're not still sore from it by the time that the B one comes around. Are there words you tell yourself mentally to train to failure? No, not really. Um, you know, I, I don't know if this is something that people, I don't know. I, I love it. I, I fucking, I love it so much. Like, it, it's not something that I have to, like, talk myself into doing. Like, I look forward to doing it uh, every day. Um, really, a lot of the exercises that I choose allow me to fail safely. So I there isn't really fear. Like, when I, when I do a hack squat, like, I don't get scared that, like, holy shit, I could, like, get hurt on this exercise. Because I know that worst case scenario, I get stuck in the bottom and I crawl out. The only exercise, the only exercise that I feel like real like fear in is like a leg press because I know if something goes wrong, then the leg press could fucking crush me, but I just get a spotter. So, uh, and, and I've been training this way for a long time. I've been training this way for like three years for, it's probably closer to four or five years now. I mean, I don't remember when I started training this way, but it's probably been like anywhere between three and five years now. So it, to me, it's just like. It's just another day, so. But I also, like, I watch the, the people that I watch on Instagram, the people that I watch on YouTube, like, they're all, they're all people that train the same way that I do, so I, like, immerse myself into, into training like this. So it's just, it's second nature. I don't really have anything that I, that I say to myself, honestly. 
just hit legs. How was it, bro? How was the leg workout? I hit my wife. <laughs> this dude's just fucking with me now. How do I know that I'm actually training hard? Film your sets and watch them back. Um, at the end, at the end of every set or every workout, like look at, I mean, don't actually like look at yourself in a mirror, but actually ask yourself, was it, could I have gotten another rep and be fucking honest with yourself? Is there more, uh, is there more that I could have done? If the answer is yes, then write it down in your book. There's, there's been a bunch of times where I've like racked a hack squat and I've like watched the video back and I'm like, fuck man, like I may have been able to get another one. Uh, and I should have just even tried to get it. And then I write that down in my logbook. Like, don't bitch out. Hold, hold yourself accountable. Hold yourself accountable to training hard. I, I never question, did I train hard? You know, like I, I know that I train hard every time. But it just, it takes time, man. Put the time in. Did you do uni or are you self-taught? I'm self-taught. Everything, everything bodybuilding, nutrition related is all self-taught. I went to I went to school, but I only have my associate's degree. I only went for two years, and I just got my like general education stuff, and then I got my personal training certification, and I started personal training after I got my associate's degree. Only my pressing movements are not progressing, while all other movements are. What do I do? Either press less or do different presses. Exercises are going to stall. You just need to adjust them from that point. You either replace them with something different or you adjust the rep range or reduce the volume or whatever. Just make an adjustment. Uh, isn't there an option to work on part-time on the GNC? Yeah, there is, but um, my store is a franchise-owned store. Uh, and so we really only have like three people that work there. I mean, I, I definitely could take less hours. Like, I mean, that's, that's an option. Um, I really am not going to take less hours until I really need to. So, because honestly, like making money from both is fucking good. So... I was sick with the flu this past December for the whole month. Currently getting back to it. Yeah, you got to uh, get back to it, man. Get back on it. Rest day today, too. What's good? How you doing, bro? I'm doing good. Fucking rest day, man. I'm looking forward to it. Needed it. Needed it. I'm still tired. I'm going to try to go to bed early tonight. Because I have legs again tomorrow. Fucking, fucking. These leg days coming around every three days is like, you'd think after running this program for like six months or a year now that I would be used to it. But it's like, it's still just, just as hard as it was when I started. What's poppin'? Mr. Peely, how you doing, bro? I'm doing, I'm doing great. Do you watch Joe Rogan Experience every once in a while? I really don't, um... I don't really watch a lot. I don't really watch a ton of content, honestly. Um, maybe if I'm in like a car ride and he's doing like a, a, you know, a podcast with a guest that I care about, but not regularly, no. I probably listen to, I would say at absolute max, probably like eight or 10 episodes of Joe Rogan in my life. You need a shave. I don't know. I mean, I don't think it looks bad. I kind of like it. Maybe you need a shave. Is benching your body weight for six reps at 15 any impressive? I don't know. I don't know, honestly. I've never really cared about that type of shit. Like, can you bench or deadlift however many times your body weight? Honestly, I've never given a fuck about any of that. So I, I don't know if it's impressive or not. Sorry. I mean, that's probably not a good answer. That's probably not the answer you're looking for, but I've just never really given a shit. 
is the safety aspect why you mostly use machines. Safety aspect and then also a, a lot of the machines that I work with are like fucking good machines, dude. And like I get a better contraction and I get uh, better muscle stimulus with the machine than I do with, with a barbell or a dumbbell. Um, and yeah, safety safety is the big thing, man. When When you literally get under a press or a squat or something and you literally say I'm going to press this or squat this until I physically cannot move the weight anymore like safety is a, is a big aspect of of training like that every single time I go into the gym I'm going to press or squat something until I physically can't move it anymore that's it's safety but I I also think machines are great they take uh they take a lot of the stability work or they improve stability, but they take a lot of the like stabilizing type of work out. Can you support my nonprofit organization? Doctors without diplomas, anything would help. Send me a DM on Instagram. How do I get over my gym anxiety when trying to film myself? I get this question a lot. Um, when, when I started recording myself, I, ha I had a little anxiety just a little bit, um, but I've also noticed that ever since I started recording myself in my gym, a lot of other people have started recording themselves too. So honestly, dude, I think you really need to ask yourself, like, why are you at the gym? Are you at the gym uh, to make progress or are you at the gym to fit in with everyone else that's there? I'm I'm at the gym that makes pro to make progress. And if I'm trying to make progress, then that includes me. Um, filming my stuff and watching it back so at some point you just gotta not give a shit about what anyone else thinks about your process you just do your own thing love your content man are you including forearm and grip training in your split i am not um but uh i should like i i don't i'm just being honest but i i should what way did you learn your nutrition and how to calculate your macros i just I just started eating at uh, a certain um, started eating at a certain calorie level, and I watched what my weight did, and I adjusted accordingly. Um, I don't really put like a ton of time into like calculating macros. Um, I think you just need to have a starting point, get moving, and then um, assess, adjust from there. You can use those calculators, but I just, I don't know if they're very accurate, honestly. Have you ever bought a program from people online and how did it go? I have not, actually. Um, I, I personally enjoy the process of self-coaching myself a lot. Um, I, I think there's, obviously I am a coach. Like, I, I feel like there's a ton of merit to having a coach. And if, if I could go back in time to when I first started, I would have definitely gotten a coach off the rip. Uh, it would have just saved me from wasting a lot of time, but I, I haven't actually bought a program from somebody online before. Thoughts on the front squat. It's great if you can uh, maintain the position. A lot of people don't have the mobility in the lats to maintain the, the, the rack position like this. This is all lat mobility. If you're tight in your lats, you can't get in the front squat position, and then a lot of people can't maintain an upright torso. They they fold over with the front squat. But if you can if you can do it, then it's it's great. I did them for a long time. Just want to say you're awesome and your content is great. Thank you for sharing your experiences. I really appreciate that, man. I I really do. The, the kind comments mean a lot to me. They really do. Appreciate you guys. Eminem or Snoop Dogg, bro. I don't know if you're talking about the halftime show or not, but if I had to pick, dude, like... I actually kind of fuck with Snoop. Like, if, if we're talking about music, like, Eminem's music is better, but if we're talking about, like, the people and the personality, like, Snoop is that boy. How can you not fuck with Snoop? If a mom and son are worth over $685 million, would you say they're sort of rich or quite wealthy? Quite wealthy. Easy one. Quite wealthy. The, entr the entry level, 
the entry level to be in the top 1% of earners in the country is only $400,000. So if you're making $400,000, you're already in the 1% of the country. And this is like, you know, 150 million times that. So these people are quite wealthy. Could you share some of the resources you use to educate yourself on training? Uh, Dante Trudell's Dog Crap Log, um, Train by JP's website, Matt Jansen's website when he used to post things on it. He hasn't really posted anything on it in a long time. Um, John Jewett. Uh, Fortitude Training, Scott Stevenson. <sighs> There's a lot. There's a lot. Those are those are the main ones that come to my mind. Mike Menser, obviously. Hello from Russia. Hey, what's up, man? Russia. That's fucking awesome. Poland. What's up, man? CPT. Poland and Russia. This is awesome. This is great. This is great. Is the platform Muscle Mentors a good one? Uh, I am not a member of the Muscle Mentors website, but all of the people that are, I follow all of the people that are on the, the Muscle Mentors team and then the people that were on the Muscle Mentors team that are now on the Pro Coach team and all of those guys are legit. So anything that they put out has real merit to it. I just am not a member of their website. Um, if I lived in the UK, then I would be a member of their website because then I could go to their seminars but the, the price for a guy in the U.S. I don't think really warrants it. Best coaching education programs. Well, the, mus the Muscle Mentors one is supposed to be really good if you can afford it. And then um, the John Jewett J3 University is a pretty good one. I'm doing that one right now. I take prescribed tests and my levels are a little high. At what point do I need an AI? So you don't you don't really need to use an AI until you start to feel estrogenic side effects that you don't want. So if you're getting nipple sensitivity, uh, your blood pressure is is high. If if your test levels are a little high, I would be taking your blood pressure at least twice a week, monitoring your blood pressure. If your blood pressure starts to get high, um, your nipples start to get sensitive or puffy. You start to retain a ton of water. Um, you find yourself like really emotional, um, then uh, you could maybe take an AI. But if, if you don't if you don't feel any of those things, then you don't you don't need to take anything. Like for example, for my last cycle, I took three hundred and fifty milligrams of test, and then my first cycle, I took three hundred milligrams of test. And both of those times, when I got my lab work back, my estrogen was like super duper high. Um, like really high. Um, but uh, if you don't actually feel any estrogenic side effects negatively, then you don't need to take an AI. And I would suggest that you don't take an AI because AIs are really hard on your, uh, on your cholesterol levels. And they can potentially lead to a cardiac event. So I don't like to use AIs unless it's absolutely necessary. Should I fly... UF, I'm already doing flat and incline in a session. Be wilder, I don't understand your question. You got a couple typos in there, I don't understand what you're trying to say. Do you track your steps, factor that into your caloric expenditure? So yep, I had keep a pedometer on my waist at all times. The only time during the day that I take this pedometer off is when I take a shower. And I, I log it every day. So I know exactly how many steps I get per day. Grape Swisher, yeah, pretty pretty much what, what Grape just said. AIs are something that get used a lot in um, in bodybuilding or just fitness, and they don't need to. Coaching Edge, I answered that already. Do you like BTS? I don't know what that is, unfortunately. Do you think being super lean is overrated? Absolutely. Anybody who has ever been super lean will be able to tell you that it fucking sucks. You look great, but you feel like fucking dog shit. It sucks, dude. It's awful. It's very, very overrated. Very overrated. 
I'm all the way in Qatar, bro, in the Middle East. Fucking, dude, this is just unbelievable. The amount of people that I see in my chat from different countries is just insane. It just kind of blows my mind that I can be sitting here in Chicago in my kitchen and I'm talking to people in the Middle East and Poland and Russia and just wild. Really, really wild to me. Can you say Fintans for the Junior Cup? You just said it. Fintans for the Junior Cup. How much elixir are you? I don't even know what that is. Lat spread. One day. One day. Posted a physique update like a month and a half ago. Go check it out. Why do we find the smell of gasoline good? That's a good question. I don't know why. But it does fucking smell good, doesn't it? Oh, you're in Des Moines? I actually have a buddy that uh, is living in, or is going to be living in Des Moines. I actually have a buddy that went to school uh, at the University of Dubuque. Um, and then uh, I'm pretty sure it's Des Moines that he's going to be moving to. Waterloo. Lots of, lots of Midwest people over here. Let's go. Iowa. Good old Iowa. You guys got the Field of Dreams and you got Slipknot. This, this is an excellent question. So Panic Knifer and, and Kobe. So you guys, you guys live in Iowa and I don't, I don't know about like what the perception is in Iowa, but like the perception in Illinois is that Iowa is kind of like one of the most boring states and, and shit like that. What are, in your guys' opinion, some of the best things about Iowa? Like someone that lives in Illinois, like what would I drive to Iowa for? What are your fitness goals? Um, I want to have a successful coaching business and I want to be a representation of that. So I, I have like a certain way that I like to train and a certain way that I whatever like to like to do shit. And I just want to have a coaching business that represents that. Uh, and then I'd love to compete in bodybuilding one day. Uh, and my goal with that is just to be the best that I can be. I don't have any like crazy ideas of like, I'm going to be a pro or something, but, um, just be the best that I can be. However, however good that is. I'll be right back guys. I'm going to go to the, go to the bathroom. Keep asking questions. I'll be back in like a few, few minutes. <clears throat> For events, Iowa State Fair is on the list of top 24 things to do before you die. Really? What's at the Iowa State Fair? I gotta Google this shit, man. Hamza, advice for... Oh, well, I'm, I'm behind. Iowa is a move-in state, not vacation state. Sixth lowest crime rate and low cost of living. Sixth lowest, wow. That makes a lot of sense. Let's 
sixth lowest crime rate and low cost of living. That's really interesting. Did not know that. I've been to Iowa like one time in my life and I, I was young. I, I don't even remember it. I mean, I was like fucking seven or eight or something. I don't even remember what we went there for. Panic Knifer, that's actually a great answer. It's a move-in state, not a vacation state. Advice for teenagers thinking about competing in the future. Uh, don't be impatient. When you're young, like, this is a, a great time to just, like, train, train in a fucking baggy hoodie and sweatpants for the next five years and just focus on gaining weight and getting big. Because you're in, like, the best... You're in the best possible situation that you could be in. Um, have fun. Like, do, do stuff with your friends. Like, don't let bodybuilding consume your life. Um, but I'd probably also say that you don't have to, like, go out and party and shit, like, every weekend. So I feel like it's, like, finding a good balance. You know, it's really going to come down to, like, how serious do you want to take it. But... You're, you're very, very, very young if you're a teenager and you want to compete. So I would just uh, focus on growing and getting big and getting strong and building a foundation. Don't even, don't even think about using PEDs. Like, I, I'm fucking serious. Like, don't even think about using them. You have, you have no place using them. Um, learn how to train and learn how to track your food and be consistent with eating the food on a daily basis. Hamza, if I if I remember correctly, I think you wrote in the past comment that you live in the Middle East. And from from my knowledge, bodybuilding culture is like I feel like it's more accepted in the Middle East than it is here in the States. So you you may be in a really good, really good position. I think that the Middle East is gonna definitely be a hub uh for bodybuilding. It it already is, and it's just gonna continue to grow. So you're you're in a good position, but just have fun, enjoy what you're doing, um, and make sure that you have some some fun too for, for with your friends. Yeah, there isn't much to see. I love our state and oh, sorry, and wouldn't want to live anywhere else. Second option is Florida. Yeah, Florida is a good Florida is a good one too. My girlfriend has family that lives in Florida. When my buddy when my buddy moves to to Des Moines, I want to go over and I wanna I want to see him. I wanna, I wanna go to Iowa. I love her. Uh, hey man, you're on early. Yeah, I am on early. I'm just, I figured I would just hop on for a little bit today. I don't know how much longer I'm, I'm gonna be on. I gotta eat here soon, but. And I didn't schedule this one either. I just kind of hopped on because I was bored. You should do live. <laughs> You should do live Q and A's. That is exactly what I'm doing right now, brother. That's a good one. That's good. That's rich. What did you hit today? Today's a rest day for me. I'm not training today. Needed that have fun part because I never go out with my friends anymore because of gym. Yeah, dude, you're way, way too fucking young to be doing like that. Way, way too young. Have, have fun with your friends, dude. You, I, I promise you, if you don't make time to have fun with your friends, I'm, t I'm 25, you're going to get to my age and you're going to be like, fuck, I wish I had done that. I'm just telling you. So do it, uh, but it doesn't have to, you know, it doesn't have to be like every weekend. And, I, and I'm, look, dude, I'm not, I'm not saying you can't do stuff with your friends, like hang out with your friends, go to their house and stuff. But like, if, if you guys are like, I don't know how old you are, but if like, if you guys are going out like drinking and stuff, like on the weekends and stuff, like you can't, you can't do that every weekend and still make progress in the gym. That's just the reality of it. So, but like hanging out with your friends and like going out to eat and shit, dude, like do, do, do that as many times as you can. Cause that, that stuff isn't really going to impact your bodybuilding that much especially in the Middle East, because from my understanding, like a lot of the food that you go out and like can go out to a restaurant and eat in the Middle East is like relatively clean, like much cleaner than what you're going to get in the States. So yeah, dude, just seriously, don't, 
take take that from like someone who's like one of the most hardcore fucking bodybuilders there is like in my opinion like you don't need to live that super strict regimented lifestyle when you're young because it's it's gonna ruin it for you you're gonna turn 18 and you're gonna be like fuck this like i'm just wasting my life doing this you know there's there's more to life than this for sure hi from france Nice, France. So what, what do we got in here? We got France, UK, Russia, Sweden, Iowa, Texas. Iowa may as well be a country on its own. Tex Texas should definitely be a country on its own, but Iowa, Iowa. That's a good one, man. I like that. I don't get a lot of Midwest people in, uh, in these lives, so it's, it's always cool. Do you think a 19-year-old should ever cut uh, if they need to? Uh, I actually am working with a 16 year old client right now who lost, who did a cut and lost like over a hundred pounds or so in a year. So if, I mean, I, I'm not saying this to be rude, but if you're fat, yeah, you should probably cut. But if you're like lean or skinny, like, no, you don't need to, you need to get big. Don't worry about the, uh, blah, 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 blah. Don't worry about the peat. Yeah. Yeah. Don't even. And, and I'm telling you, dude, as, as you get older, you're going to get more and more people that like put the idea in your head and it's going to become more and more and more tempting. I think you need to dedicate at least three to five years of like solid, consistent, like consistent consistency with your training and your nutrition before you even consider it. So. And even then, I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend you get on until you're like 23, 25. So don't even, don't even put that in your head. If, if you can do the training and the nutrition, if you finally do decide to take PEDs when you're 23, 25, like you're going to fucking explode because you have the training and the nutrition part down pat. And that's the part that really matters. You can take all the PEDs in the world, but if you don't know how to train and how to eat, you're not going to get shit. So like I said, build the foundation while you're young. The things that really matter. Prioritize your sleep, recovery, your training, and your nutrition. What's your split? Um, legs push, rest. Legs pull, rest. So I train my legs twice as frequently as... Uh, uh, I train my legs twice as frequently as I train my upper body. I'm Muslim, bro. I don't drink. It's fine. Plus I'm 15. Yeah, so you're you're good, man. I wish I wish I was 15 when I started. So just keep keep plugging away, but also have fun and have have some some balance in your life. How are your rear? Well, it's it's yeah, the rear foot elevated split squats going. Uh, I'm gonna do them tomorrow. So I will uh, I'll put a video up tomorrow of how they went. The second time around was better than the first time, so I am expecting the third time around to be better than the second. My goal, my goal for tomorrow is to do my whole right foot without having to, without having to come off. So, that's the goal. What's your split? I just answered that. Have you trained high volume before, and for how long? Uh, I trained high volume for like a year. Scotty, Keely, what do you mean by that? Scotty. Oh, geez. Yeah, where you're from. Where you're from. Scotty. Wisconsin? Boston? Fuck the Red Sox. I'm a Yankees fan. But I'd still like to go to Boston. I'd love to go to Fenway. I don't know if you're a baseball fan. Pennsylvania? Yeah, Middle East food is really clean over here. You're giving me more life advice than my own dad. I am I am your dad, Hamza. Just remember that. Oregon out here, brother. Nice. How's uh how what is the what I've never been I've never been west and I've especially never been northwest. So what uh what's the weather like in Oregon out there right now, bro? Mark. Mark, what's it like? TikTok keeps hiding QS. Is there a point in doing C flies? Chest flies, I would assume, if you're doing incline and flat. Yeah, because the, um, 
the fly is going to help you put the uh, um, the peck in full range of motion. You're going to be able to get the peck fully shortened and fully lengthened. You can do that with a dumbbell too, but um, the, the resistance profile won't be as optimal. And then also, uh, if you're using a barbell, you won't be getting full peck contraction. So yeah, I, I would do flies. There's a reason why everyone does a press, do, does presses and flies in their chest session. So I would, I would do flies. Can you record Q and A and upload them somewhere? I would love to listen to them. Uh, actually, man, I've started posting them on my YouTube. Um, so if you go on my, uh, I think if you go on my TikTok, well, on my TikTok, I have my link tree. You can click on my link tree and you can find my YouTube channel in there. You can also just type my name into YouTube and I have, um, that my Q and A's are uploaded onto there. I'm actually going to upload another one today. And then this one will get uploaded probably within a couple days. Um, how much is lifetime? I'm not sure what you're talking about. How much is lifetime? Cookville, Tennessee. Tennessee, dude. Tennessee is like um, so, Mr. Majestic. You'll have to, you'll have to let me know how close you are to Nashville. Within the past couple of years, dude, there's been hell of people going to Nashville. So, is Tennessee like on the come up, like economically, uh, or like what's going on? What's going on in Tennessee? Because Tennessee's blowing up, bro. And how how far are you from Nashville? don't do the socks like that dude it's you know they're they're solid i i only talk shit about the socks because i'm a yankees fan and i feel like i have to but they're fucking good they give us a run every year and i th i think they were probably better than us last year what's your opinion on zoo files isn't that the people that like fuck animals and shit dude like what kind of question is that i'm gonna google this just to make sure but a person who is a sexually attracted to animals. That's some fucked up shit. Singapore, it's 2 a.m. Dedicated to it. Dedicated to the grind. 2 a.m., 2 a.m. Should I eat chicken or broccoli? I'm 19. Yes. Eat them. What's the difference between progressive overload and ego lifting? Uh, ego lifting is like, is doing reps that are with shitty form. Um... Progressive overload is sticking to a rep tempo or a rep style and uh, and getting stronger. How low do calories have to drop before your gains are affected? Probably not something that you really need to worry about. Um, I I I have dieted on fucking a thousand calories before. You just you got to do what you got to do. No, great. You're clearly just fucking with me, but no. <laughs> Burn the zoo files. Is that the one that asked me the question about zoo files? Yeah. I didn't even see your username. I was like, why the fuck is this guy asking me questions about zoo files? And then he's got to burn the zoo files username. I didn't even see that. I saw your old vid on whether there is a point in training the anterior delt directly. I was wondering if you still feel the same. No, I, or I, I yes, I, I do feel uh, the same. I don't think it really needs to be focused on. Um, it's just really, uh, I, it, it gets hit so indirectly by like so many other things that I just don't really see a point. Now, if if your if your front delts are like lagging, then yeah, you need to improve them. But I, I don't know many people who have lagging front delts, honestly. Switched our straight bar pull down and kneeling bar pull downs and gained twenty pounds of muscle in a day. That's legit, bro. I'm gonna do that too. I bench four ninety for ten. I'm sixty. <laughs> post post a video, bro. 60 kgs, that's what, like, I'm gonna go, that's fucking 130 pounds. It'd be like my fucking girlfriend benching 490 for 10. So cable front raises aren't really needed. No, I, I would not consider that a necessary exercise. When, when I, when I program push sessions for people, I, I very rarely, uh, 
will have a direct anterior, like a, a direct front shoulder press exercise. Very rarely. No offense, but we train very similar. Well, I hope that we train very similar because then I'm going to gain 20 pounds of muscle, of muscle in a day, right? Would you train with AJ Morris like in a fucking heartbeat, dude? In a heartbeat. I'm a genetic phenom. It's true, bro. I'm squatting 520 for six reps. I need to see videos, bro. Let's see it. Let's see it. Let's see it. How come so many UK bodybuilders program shoulder presses in their push? You feel I don't I don't know. Um like, look, like I said, there, there are different, um, there are different thought processes on this. M my, my thought process is if you are going to invest like the physical energy into doing a shoulder press, if you invested that energy into a chest press, uh, I think that the positive effects on your physique would be better with the chest press than what they would be with the shoulder Especially when you consider, especially when you consider if you're doing like a mid incline sh uh, chest press, you're also getting tons of front delt activation. So like, like I said, I, I, I don't think it's completely like useless, but I, I would just, instead of doing like a chest press, a shoulder press and a tricep press, I would just rather do, do two chest presses and a tricep press. Cause with both of the chest presses and the tricep press, you're going to get front delt activation. I don't, I don't see the need to invest recovery, um, invest recovery into a shoulder press pretty much. If, if you wanted to hit your front delts, uh, you could do like a front raise or something at the end, but I still don't think that's necessary. Protein per body weight or lean body mass. I use, I use protein, um, or fuck, I use protein. I use body weight. Um, calculating lean body mass is pretty difficult for a lot of people. So I just use body weight. Your body weight is always going to be higher than your lean body mass anyways. So with protein is one of those things where if you're over, it's not a big deal. So I would rather be over than under. And I feel like if some people may under or excuse me people may overestimate their lean body mass and would maybe under eat protein beta i benched 300 for 10 at 15 this kid benches 300 for uh uh 300 for 10 what was the hardest thing for you when it came to starting out with coaching for people to know who the fuck i was dude this is a competitive uh this is a competitive field and a competitive industry Every, everybody wants to work from home and be their own boss and, and be a coach and all that type of stuff, but only, only a select few amount of people can actually do it. And so um, I'm, I'm not even going to answer this question as if like I've made it with coaching because I'm still working like a job. Like I'm not making my full-time career from coaching yet. So honestly, I don't even know if I'm really qualified to answer this question, but um every everyone's a coach man it, the the thing about coaching is that you don't need like you don't need a license or you don't need a degree like anyone can go on the internet and put coach in their in their bio and uh and be a coach but not everyone is actually a good coach not not everyone actually provides a legitimate coaching service so Bro, I've been differing on whether I should include an overhead press. Uh, I'll take your advice. What, what I do in my push sessions, I'm not doing this right now because I'm dieting and cruising. Um, but when drugs and food go back in, I'll probably make this change to my push sessions is I do a flat chest press and an incline chest press. 
And I, I promise you, especially if that incline press is done at a sufficient angle, uh, you're gonna get plenty of front delt stimulus from that. And if, if you're weighing your options, you have a shoulder press or you have an incline chest press, both of these hit the front delt, but the incline chest press also hits your upper pec. So I, th I think that an incline chest press is a smarter option than a shoulder press. What part of the shoulder does a dumbbell press work? The front, the front delt. Hamza, as young as young as you are, though, I think you need to do shoulder presses. You need to uh, you need to establish that base. Does Masteron make test more bioavailable? I don't think it makes it more bioavailable, but I do know that Masteron will reduce the overall amount of estrogen uh, that's in your body, which will increase your androgenic to estrogenic ratio. So ma Masteron is basically uh, an anabolic aromatase inhibitor, I would say, but I, I don't think that it actually makes your testosterone more bioavailable. How do I train harder? How do I train to throw harder than 95? You need to replace your elbow and shoulder with uh, like rubber bands. Um, Nathan, can you still throw 95? That's, that's fucking impressive, bro. I mean, I, I don't doubt you. Like, I'm not, I'm not like surprised, but I just, I think it's cool that you can be however many years removed from, from the game and still throw like that. Uh, for everyone in, in my chat that was here about Iowa, Rhythm Nate, this was the guy that I was talking about that's moving to, to Iowa and went to Dubuque. Nathan, I was talking about you earlier in my, uh, in my live. I had a couple people that said that they were from Iowa and I was like, I don't really know anybody from Iowa, but I do have a buddy that went to Iowa and is gonna be moving to Iowa soon. I have trouble keeping my balance when doing Bul Bulgarian splits. Any tips? Well, you must be new here because that is the exact same problem that I have. Uh, usually it really comes down to how you're rooting your foot uh, and, and putting your foot on, uh, on the ground. Um, you want a, like a tripod foot stance. You want your big, your big toe pressure, your little toe pressure, and then your heel. So that's, that's my biggest problem. Without sounding weird, could you critique my physique? Tell me what's lacking. Yeah, Rory, no problem. Um, the, the, the best way for you to do that is to send, uh, pictures to my Instagram. So Rory, I don't know if you, if you have an Instagram, but if you do, uh, my Instagram is the same username as my TikTok. If you send me the pictures in a DM there, then I can, I can check them. I, uh, I don't really have good experience with the TikTok DM platform. Like sometimes my pictures and shit get lost in it. So if you could send it to my Instagram, if you have one, then that would be the best way to do it. Uh, if you don't have an Instagram, let me know and I can figure out a different way for you to get the pictures to me. But yeah, I, I have no problems. Just send them to send me your stuff. I'm a coach. Me, good coach. See, Nathan's a real coach. Nathan's a coach in like a real sport. Nathan's a baseball coach. Thoughts on Monkey Luther King? I'm not even answering that. Just the way you worded that is fucking derogatory. So a shoulder press cable lateral and a rear delt fly is fine. Yep, that's perfectly fine, man. I'm washed up. I can hit 89, though. That's still fucking good, bro. Yeah, Nathan, I, I had a couple people that were talking about Iowa. They, or they said they were from Iowa. What was the first gym you went to? It was, uh, well, it would have been the gym that was at my high school. Um, yeah, eighth grade when I started lifting for football. What's the most you progress at a time in pounds? Uh, it, de it depends. 
depends if I'm on cycle or if I'm not on cycle. Uh, when I'm on cycle, I can make bigger jumps faster. Um, depends, you know, depends how the last rotation's performance went in. I don't, I don't really have like set numbers like that, but it, it's all pretty much determined by my logbook and what my logbook jumps have been doing. So, but in, in, in general, usually when I'm cruising, I'm, I'm like fractional plating. So I'm adding like a pound at a time. I'm using the little baby plates. Uh, and when I'm on cycle, I can add anywhere from five to 10, depending on the lift. Priscilla, where are you from? What uh, what flag is that? Argentina. I did I did not know that. I don't I don't know my flags, man. I don't fucking I do not know. Them. Ireland. So so let's I'm trying I'm trying to recap from this live so far. We've got Ireland, Argentina. This guy's from Kentucky, Texas earlier, Iowa. So a couple of people from the states, but then we got the UK, we got Sweden, uh we got Portugal right? Portugal? I probably said the UK already. Singapore, not Portugal, Singapore. Uh, Tennessee, Oregon, the Middle East, Hamza's is from the Middle East. Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Boston. Yeah, man, it's just really crazy for me every time that I get on these, uh, get on these lives, like different countries and stuff, man, that's just that's just crazy. So crazy to me. Thank you guys for watching. What time we got? All right, guys, I'm, pr I'm probably going to be on for like another five to 10 minutes. Um, I got to eat here and then I got, got to get ready to go to work. I got to leave for work in about an hour. Or so um, I got I got to eat and then I've got a little bit more client work that I got to finish up. And then go to my actual fucking job and do more client work there. Um, so we'll just we'll kind of use this as like an opportunity for you guys to get a last uh, last couple rounds of questions in or um, whatever stuff like that. Um, we'll go and we'll fill it up, fill it up. Do you ever have gym anxiety? So actually, believe it or not, uh, I do. Um, I feel I feel some sort of anxiety going to the gym every single leg day. Every single leg day, I will always have anxiety uh, going to the gym. Um, and then usually my my push and pull days, not really. Um, but the the big thing that I have been having gym anxiety with lately. Um, so, so usually, um, I, I was training in the morning, like I'd wake up, I'd have one meal and I would go to the gym in the morning uh, and then I would work in the afternoon. Uh, my work schedule has changed this past, like ever since January and three of the five days during the week, I am working in the morning and I'm working until three in the afternoon and then I'm going to the gym from there. And I always have gym anxiety on those days because the gym is a lot more busy, is a lot busier at, in the, at 3.30 in the afternoon than it is at 8.30 in the morning, obviously. Um, so I, I, don't, I don't have anxiety about the amount of people that are going to be there. The thing that I have anxiety about is like going to do an exercise and there's people that are on it. Because I'm, I'm the type of guy that like, I like to move at a good pace. Like once I finish one exercise, I go to the next and I don't like to have to wait in between. 
and when the gym is really, really busy and I have to sit there and I have to wait for people to get off of the machines and stuff, that causes me anxiety. Um, so yes, to answer your question, I do have gym anxiety. I do get it. Thoughts on no fat for the gym. I don't really see any, uh, any merit in it. Um, uh, Jeff, N Jeff Nippard has a video on this, I think. I believe I remember watching a video on this once. Um, but there isn't really any like good evidence to support it. So, fap away, brother. Stay halal. <laughs> If my strength has been good at the gym, should I keep food the same? Can't believe you're still on live. Yeah, I know. I'm about to wrap it up here. Um, well, Charlotte, to, to answer your question, I, the answer is going to come down to what is your body weight doing? Um, and as you mentioned earlier, you're not really tracking your body weight. So, um, yeah, you, you could keep your food the same, the same where it is. Um, if you're, if you're as hungry as you say that you are and uh, your weight isn't really going up, then you could maybe increase your calories a little bit more. But if your weight is going up at a, at a good pace and uh, your strength is doing good things in the gym, then you're, I would just keep it where it's at. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. How do you solve scapula winging? Uh, I'm not a medical professional. You know, uh, not a medical professional, so I don't, uh, I don't know. I can't really answer that question. It's probably something that you could YouTube, and there's probably some uh, some stretches or mobility work that you could do to fix it. But off the top of my head, I have no idea. All right, guys, closing time. One last round. It is 12.24 right now. Uh, I'm going to give it to like 12.26. And then all the questions that have been asked up until then, I'm going to answer and then I'm going to dip. So just a couple minutes left, guys. If you guys got any last minute, last second questions, throw them in. This has been a good one. This has been a good lie. Lots of people from a lot of uh, a lot of places around the fucking world this time. Crazy, 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 crazy. Saw this personal coach at my gym making her client do LR and then hitting the adductor right after. Uh, Castillo, what, what is LR? It's probably something that is like super obvious. I just, it's escaping me right now. LR. Lateral raise. Interesting. Yeah, that's a weird, that's a weird superset. That's a weird one. Strange. All right, guys. I think this is going to uh, this is going to wrap this one up. Um, thank you guys for everyone that came out and and was watching this one. Thanks for all the the great questions. Obviously, um, lots of different people from everywhere in the world in this one. So that's that's so fucking cool. Uh, thank you guys for taking the time in your gym to, uh, or taking the time out of your day to uh, ask me some gym questions. And uh, I will see you guys. I'm sure I'll probably do another one of these this weekend, either Saturday or Sunday. The one that I do this weekend, I will, uh, I'll make sure that I make a post about 
uh, so that people can schedule it and and make it. You know, this this one was kind of spur of the spur of the moment. So if you're if you're just tuning in now, then you missed the Q and A. Then uh, I'll have this whole thing up on my YouTube within uh, within a couple days. So uh, thanks again for checking in, guys. Um, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll talk to you guys in a bit.